Welcome top news today. Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump credit AFP US President Donald Trump has said a deal with North Korea is very much in the making, after criticism over his readiness to agree to talks with Pyongyang. The deal with North Korea is very much in the making and will be, if completed, a very good one for the world. Time and place to be determined, Mr. Trump said in a tweet on Friday. His comments came after the White House said talks would only take place once the secretive regime takes concrete and verifiable actions that went beyond promises to halt nuclear testing and denuclearize. It has emerged that the president's sudden acceptance of an invitation to a historic summit was apparently off the cuff, leaving aides scurrying to draft a new blueprint for dealing with Pyongyang. Mr. Trump's immediate positive response to Mr. Kim's invitation to talk had taken not only senior U.S. officials by surprise, but also the South Korean envoys who delivered it, according to reports the South Koreans, including National Security Chief, Chung. Yu Yong had been due to meet with Mr. Trump on Friday, when the president invited them and U.S. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster into the Oval Office for an impromptu debriefing a day early, reported the New York Times. Chung Yu Yong at the White House credit Bloomberg Mr. Chung told Mr. Trump that Kim Jong-un had indicated he was interested in meeting. Then, as the South Korean officials laid out possible responses to Mr. Kim's invitation, the U.S. president reportedly interrupted, saying, OK, OK, tell them he'll do it. The officials appeared stunned as Mr. Trump said he would meet Mr. Kim if the North Korean dictator was sincere and understood the terms, the Wall Street Journal reported. Mr. Trump then said, tell him yes. A bewildered Mr. Chung reportedly had to first call South Korean President Moon Jae-in to get his approval, before Mr. McMaster and Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders worked out the unusual logistics of a foreign government making such a significant announcement from the White House. A senior South Korean official later told the Yonhap Newswire that the envoys had delivered a special message to Mr. Trump from Mr. Kim in addition to the summit invitation. The official declined to disclose the contents of the message, saying that it was meant to be an exchange between two leaders, but indicated that it was part of Kim's effort to build trust. The White House struggled to keep a lid on mixed messages in the wake of the president's surprise decision to be the first ever sitting U.S. president to enter direct talks with a North Korean leader. Previous presidents had shied from similar summits for fear of handing a propaganda coup to Pyongyang that it was being treated as an equal on the world stage. Chung Yu Yong left a North Korean leader Kim Jong Un credit Uppy Barcroft. The Trump administration stressed that it would still maintain maximum pressure on North Korea while attempting to swat away criticism that the U.S. was getting nothing in exchange for agreeing to the historic facet o face meeting. Thursday's announcement appeared to have caught some senior U.S. officials off guard, including Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who was not briefed before Mr. Trump took his audacious diplomatic gambit. Mr. Tillerson, who is currently on his first trip to Africa, had told reporters on Thursday that talks with the North were still a distant prospect. On Saturday his aide said he had cancelled his program in Kenya for the day because he was not feeling well after a long couple of days working on major issues back home such as North Korea. The White House is planning for the proposed summit will be hampered by the lack of senior qualified experts available to help top officials, including Mr. Tillerson, to develop a negotiating strategy. The administration is going to be constrained in the preparations for the summit because the roster has a lot of critical gaps, said Bruce Klingner, senior research fellow for Northeast Asia at the Heritage Foundation. Right now the administration still has a higher percentage of open positions a year into the administration than any other previous presidency, he added. One of those vacancies includes the U.S. ambassador to Seoul. The U.S. special envoy for North Korean policy, Joseph Yoon, also retired from his post last week. His departure deprives the administration of the sole diplomat who had been in charge of regular communication between Pyongyang and Washington under the so-called New York Channel. A number of options have reportedly been touted for filling Mr. Yoon's shoes, including Susan Thornton, the acting assistant secretary of state for East Asia and Pacific Affairs. Another likely key figure in the planning process is Alison Hooker, the only official left in the administration with first-hand experience of North Korea.
Thomas Hooker traveled to Pyongyang in 2014 as a senior National Security Council official along with then U.S. intelligence chief James Clapper to negotiate the release of American detainees. Another option on the table is the infusion of fresh blood. CNN quoted a government official as saying that the administration may recruit an outside expert as a special envoy to handle North Korea alongside Mr. Tillerson. One scenario being discussed in policy circles is that H.R. McMaster, the embattled national security advisor, could leave the White House to take command of U.S. forces in Korea while veteran former diplomat John Bolton becomes special envoy. Scott Snyder, director of the program on us Korea policy at the Council on Foreign Relations, said a senior envoy would need pretty solid knowledge of the historical record of Pyongyang's relationship with Washington. I guarantee that the counterparts in the North Korean support team will know every little word associated with past interactions, he said. Up until now the focus had been on finding the right combination of pressure to convince the North Koreans to talk, he argued. But once you get the North Koreans to talk, you have to have a strategy, a plan, and you have to have a credible roadmap for how to go forward on the critical issues. Meanwhile, other experts, including former National Foreign Policy Advisor Victor Cha, have warned that the unexpected twist in diplomacy could lead to a new breakthrough on North Korea's nuclear and weapons program but alternatively to disaster. While the unpredictability of a meeting between these two unconventional leaders provides unique opportunities to end the decade-old conflict, its failure could also push the two countries to the brink of war, he read in the New York Times.